Hey, this is Pete Winters from Table Rock Lake. Uh, I'm a full-time fishing guide on Table Rock. Been guiding for 22, 23 years. And one of the most commonly asked questions I get from clients is, what do they need to look for when they're purchasing a bass boat? Well, like I said, I've been guiding for 23 years, uh, running bass boats for 25 to 30. So I was just gonna give you some insights on some things that I like and what I look for, you know, when I get a new boat. Now, naturally, you know, a lot of it is going to be your cost, uh, what your budget is, how much you're going to spend. A lot of times, it's uh, what will fit in my garage. Most all the boat companies, I'm running the Nitro Z9, but you can go to nitro.com, and they've got information on there, you know, on the, each model boat with the swing away tongue, as far as how much clearance you need to get it in, in your garage. Uh, one of the other questions that always pops up is single or dual console. Personally, I like a single console because whether it's an 18, 19, 20 foot, whatever size boat it is, without the console here, it's just got a lot more room. But a lot of times, if your wife's involved in, uh, you know, purchasing the boat, they like the security of having something in front of them, and maybe even your fishing partner wants something to block the wind when it's cold. Well, what Nitro has, and a lot of the other manufacturers as well, they got consoles that just pop in and pop out. So that's an option for you. Like I get my boats without the console and when I go to sell the boat, if somebody wants the console, I can order it for them. That's one of the reasons I always run a white interior. If you're gonna get a dual console, I suggest you get it when you order the boat so all the paint scheme matches up. Uh, a lot of the other things I like it, with all the different boats I've had, I like everything to be handy and convenient. And whether the second console is here or not, I can still set right here on this rod locker where I can get at all my tackle. Therefore, I like to keep, and you know, the boxes up front depends on how big a boat you've got as far as how much storage. Now, this is almost a 21 foot boat, so I've got a lot of storage. And up front here, I keep, I've got like four life jackets up there, two sets of rain gear, change of clothes, and I've still got plenty of room. I, it's all dry storage, I keep all that up there out of the way. Uh, in here, I've got all my Plano 3700 boxes, and uh, these are little clips that hold the bags that I use all the time. Most of the hard baits that I think I'm going to be using uh, throughout that day, I'll have real close to me. Over here, I've got a lot of backups to my plastics, uh, extra bags, so when I run out of what I'm using up here. So this is one that I don't feel like I have to get into all the time. Like I say, I want it right here where it's convenient. That way I can sit here and retie. I don't like having my tackle stored way over on the other side. That way every time I gotta tie something on, I gotta get up on my hands and knees and get into that compartment. Now some of the boats have center rod storage. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I just assume have my rod storages on the sides. That way I can keep all my tackle right here. But some of the boats that have center rod storage also have a little bit of tackle storage in there too. As much tackle as I carry, and most of us do, you don't have enough room for both. So I want my tackle real easy to get to, convenient. Another thing I like to look for is with the, the coolers, you know, I want my cooler down below or in the back of the boat. There's some boats that got some of these compartments really cut up. Well, you know, if I put a, a cooler or another storage compartment up here, then I can't carry any rods up there. You know, then I'm limited to carrying my rods all on one side. What I like to do is keep my bait casters on one side, spinning rods in the other. Uh, in the event I'm fishing a tournament or something, a lot of times I'll carry a spare trolling motor with me. Uh, in case I break a cable or run into a stump and, and bend a shaft, if you're in a tournament or even out guiding, I'm done for the day. Well, with the full rod lockers, I can carry my spare trolling motor and then put my rods in on top of it. Uh, another thing I like is if I'm up here fishing and I want to get to another rod, I don't want to have to move the rods that are on my deck to get into the compartment. I want to be able to flip the lid open, not have to worry about throwing my rods out in the lake. And this side here, I've got rod tubes in, so I keep all my rods protected. The other side, I don't have the rod tubes in, so that's so I can put more rods in, and like I said, I can put the trolling motor in as well. But this is real convenient, you know, being able to flip that open, 
without tossing your rods out the lake. Depends on the layout of the boat, but most boats, you need a step to get up to the front deck anyways. So, I mean, I think the ideal place for a cooler is right here. One of the things that's pretty slick on this boat, I think all boats should have it, out of 25 or 30 years of having bass boats, this is the only one I've ever had that's had a trash can. And I think that's pretty slick. It pops in, pops out, it's out of the way. And what they've done with this storage is, is they've utilized just about every bit of storage, that uh, every little space in the boat. I've got the little slide out drawers here. Uh, keep my sunglasses, sunscreen, everything in that side. But you know, a lot of guys will carry line and everything in them. I've got a lot of my dyes and uh, set sprays and things over here. And what's also convenient about not having that second console, it's a lot easier for your passenger to get to his rods, have access to his tackle. Now, you can't see it on this uh, little video we're shooting, but right behind the seats, I like to have big storage and behind the passenger seat I usually try to keep it empty so if I'm in a tournament that way my partner has plenty of room for his tackle or like with my clients they've got room to put their lunches or their rain gear and stuff back there and then the one behind my seat you know uh, I'll keep like my crackers my snacks stuff like that it's all dry storage <coughs> you know you can lay it out however you want but one thing I like I don't want a boat company building my storage with organization racks in there so I have to rack my tackle the way they think I need it. I would just assume whatever space is there, leave it as big as they can. If I want a divider in it, I'll put a divider in it. Because you know everybody has a different style of how they lay their tackle out. So I like that option of not having you know, you put a certain size Plano here and a certain size there. I just want it all open. If I want to build a divider, it's easy enough to do. Now, you know, a, a lot of other things uh, on a boat is, you know, people look at resale and, and the cost of boats. Now, I've kind of looked at how much boats depreciate each year and whether it's a high-end boat or a cheaper boat, they all seem to drop about the same. So as far as one having a higher resale than the other, the one that costs more is probably going to sell more for used because they've cut more into it. But the percentage that it drops, I've always found to be pretty close to the same. I think if you can buy the boat right, you know, you can sell it right. And I ran Champion and Rangers for over 20 years. And this is my second uh, full year I've been in the Nitro. A, a buddy of mine... A uh, close friend of mine I do a lot of fishing with, ran a Z9, and I fished with him quite a bit. And I was kind of impressed with the boat, so I got to looking around. And the price difference, I mean, just blew me away. It was for the same boat, with the same, you know, same motor, electronics, it's about $18,000 difference on the Z9. Uh, and I've always run Mercury since like 1989. I've run Mercury and Motor Guide. Uh, I don't see any reason to change. They're probably the most fuel efficient engine out there. There's more Mercury dealers across the country than any place. If I ever need service work, there's one in every corner. So I'm, you know, pretty well sold on the Merc. But as far as the boat, when I came over to the Nitro, you know, I honestly expected for eighteen thousand dollars that I'd be giving some things up versus them higher end boats. But I've been uh, thoroughly impressed. I mean. It rides smoother than the previous boat I had. It's drier. It's got a little better storage. And, you know, I spend as many days in a boat as most of you people spend at work. And there's nobody paying me to do this commercial. Uh, I mean, I buy my boats just like you guys. But I just thought I'd share some of this information, some first-hand information with you. And, uh, you know, like I say, I spend well over 200 days a year in the boat. I put you know, a lot of hours, 250 hours or so. So my boats get a lot of wear and tear. You know, I don't know exactly the grade, the thickness of the carpet or the seats, but I found uh, my Z9 wears just the same as every other boat I previously owned. Doesn't seem to be any difference. Uh, and like I say, for the money difference, you know, another thing to look at is what you're going to be fishing as far as, like, tournament circuits. 
I fish a lot of regional stuff. I used to fish national stuff, but I just stay close to the house. And uh, Nitro has a deal called Tournament Rewards, which uh, on these regional circuits, if you've got over 60 boats with this particular boat, I win the tournament, I, I'd win an extra $5,000. Like the next smaller boat, the Z8, I think would be 3000 And they pay down, clear down to their aluminum boats with a 60 horse. Uh, naturally, the, the smaller the boat, the less incentive money it's going to pay back. And you don't even have to win the tournament. Like, if I'm the highest Nitro finisher in that event, I'll get, you know, an extra $500. And these don't have to be Nitro sponsored events. They may be Champion or Triton events or Phoenix or Ranger, but as long as they meet the qualifications or the criteria set by Nitro, then I'm eligible for that. In most all the tournaments that I fish in our area, and I think almost all of them, as long as it's got 60 boats, even if it's got less than 60, uh, I think if it's got more than 30, I'm still eligible to win some money for first, just not as much if it's over 60. So there's a lot of different things, you know, to look at uh, when you go purchasing a boat. And another thing I kind of looked at is, you know, a couple of the best fishermen in the world, uh, like Kevin Van Dam and Ricky Klein, I mean, they've qualified for over 50 Bassmaster Classics between them. They've won over eight of them. Now, when you win a Bassmaster Classic, I mean, that's your ticket. You can operate, you know, I mean, you can run any kind of boat you want. I mean, you got you got people there wanting you to run their product. And and those guys, like I say, after winning eight classics between them, qualifying for almost 60, both of them choose to run a Nitro. So they, if it's, I feel if it's good enough for them to win Bassmaster Classics and to do what they got to do with it day in and day out, it serves every purpose I need. So if you get a chance for shopping, you know, uh, go to nitroboats.com and you know, compare the boats apples for apples. Uh, I mean, my trailer, uh, I feel it's as good, every bit as good as every trailer out there. Most, for the most part, for the boat, I mean, we're all running pretty much the same motors, same leg. You got two different kinds of electronics. You're either running Lorance or Hummingbird or maybe Garvin. You know, outboard motors is pretty much Mercury dominated and then maybe Yamaha. Uh, but, like I say, if you get a chance, go to their website and check out their product.